All right, guys, so let's do example 5B. I, I just wanted to do some examples here to finish up every example on a note sheet so you have more uh, things to look at. Um, so two techniques. We'll do number one, uh, which is not exponentiating, and then we'll do exponentiating, which is the textbook way. So if I have this uh, equation, log base 2 of x minus 6 equals 5, the technique I showed you was just to use the definition of logarithms to write this in exponential form. So you say 2 to the fifth equals x minus 6. And then solving means get x equal. So I'm just solving for x. So I get 32 equals x minus 6. And just add 6 both sides. And I'm sorry, that's great. Uh, add 6 both sides. And you get 38 equals x. Okay, that's that. But there's another way, which is their technique that they're describing here in the textbook, which is called exponentiating. That means make every side, each side of the equation, turn each side into an exponent. So think of it this way. I'm going to make uh, log base 2 of x minus 6, and I'm going to make 5 an exponent of something. So what I have to do is decide what base am I using here. Okay, when I make those two things exponents, that's called exponentiating. And so what you do, again, similarly to what we've done in many other cases, is I look at the base of the log and I use that as my base of my exponential expression. And the reason for this is because we had a property called the inverse property that said, if I have 2 to the log base 2, then the answer to this whole expression is just the thing I'm taking the log of. Okay? So we had an inverse property earlier that said that. So that's why I choose 2 as the base of the exponential expression to use when I make these two things exponents. Okay? And so this whole side is just equal to x minus 6, and this is equal to 32. And then I just do the same thing I did before. Add 6 to both sides and you get 38. Okay, So not very different from this technique. They're both kind of the same thing. Except one requires you to think of turning the expression into uh, exponents. And the other one is just solving it directly. Okay, By using the definition of logarithms. Alright, and so that's, that's uh, example uh, 5b. We did 5a in class 6. A we did in class 2. And that did not go very, very well on your own. So let's do 6b as well. I'll do 6b with you here. So again, solve the equation and be sure to check for extraneous solutions. Again, solving means I want x equals. All right, that's always what we mean when we say solve. Well, the majority of the time. And so we do this and we say, uh, how can I proceed? So I want to get x out of here on its own, isolate it to solve for x. So how should I proceed? So um, there are things you can do, like maybe try to exponentiate or something like that. But the problem is I have two log expressions. So if I move this this way, now I have 3 plus log base 4x. And exponentiating is not really going to simplify that because I'm going to get something strange when I do that. Um, because I'm going to have a log base 4 of x minus 3. So it's not going to be like this where I have a simple exponent that I can just say that's the answer. This is going to be a log thing plus a 3 or minus a 3. That's going to be like division. It's, it's tricky. Okay, so uh, trying to directly exponentiate or something like that's not going to work here. But it says use the properties of logs. Oh, we learned that when I'm adding two logs, that actually is useful as um, rewriting as multiplication of the thing I'm taking the log of. Okay, and so we call this the product property. So this is the reverse of the product property. If I'm not expanding, but I'm actually condensing. So I'm going to condense this and say, uh, how about log base 4 of 
and condense, turn this plus into multiplication and condense it as a single log. So I'm taking these two and putting them together, condensing. Okay, and so what you get is x plus 12 uh, like this times x. Right, so here's my multiplication. If I combine them, then the plus turns into multiplication. And uh, that's how I do that. And so now all I have to do is uh, say log base 4 of, and then distribute the x in here. Okay, so that's x squared plus 12x equals 3. Well, now I have a single log equal a single number. And that looks quite a bit like this one. Okay, and this one. So you can exponentiate or just write it in exponential form. So I, I like just doing this trick, say 4 to the third. Uh, oh, and let me move this up a little bit because we're going to run out of space. 4 to the third equals x squared plus 12x, like that. Okay? And then I have uh, something fairly doable. Move the 4 to the third over. And that 4 to the third would become minus, what, 64? Something like that. Minus 64. Okay. And then uh, try and factor it. So this is back to a chapter 2 question. Okay. X, X, and 64. Uh, 16 and 4. It looks like it's plus 16 minus 4. And if you FOIL that, I think you get the right answer. So this would be x is negative 16 or x is positive 4. Now, checking if, this, if these uh, solutions are extraneous involves plugging them back into the equation for x here and then seeing if anything happens that causes a problem for the definition of what a log is. Okay, So um, if I plug in negative 16 here, I'm going to get negative 16 plus 12, and that would be negative 4. But by definition, I cannot do something like this. Okay, There's no power I can raise 4 to to give me negative 4. That's a thing that's undefined. right? So this can't happen. So that tells me that negative 16 can't be a solution. So this is extraneous. Okay. If I plug in 4, let's see if I plug in 4, let me erase this. Oh, and, and by the way, sorry, you should check both places. So uh, here and here, negative 16 causes a problem, okay? Uh, but if I do 4, let's see, if I plug 4 in here, log base 4 of 4, that's 1, that's fine. And this is log base 4 of 16, that's fine, that works, okay? Log base 4 of some positive number, that's fine, I can do that. So this answer is fine. Right, so this one is extraneous, and uh, the other one is fine. Okay, so that's uh, example 6b, and then how about example 7? Let's see about example 7. Again, population growth. Population growth. We're talking about population growth. So this says uh, the population of deer in a forest preserve can be modeled by the equation so-and-so. All right, P equals 50 plus 200 ln of T plus 1, where T is the time in years from present. So T is time in years from now. All right, in how many years will the deer population reach 500? So population, so they're asking when will P be 500? Okay, how many years? So the question is asking for a T value because time in years is a T value. And so I'm plugging 500 into the equation for P and then solving for T. That's what I'm doing. So here's the equation that I was given. Uh, P equals 50 plus 200 ln of T plus 1. And then I'm plugging this in here. So 500 equals 50 plus 200 ln of T plus 1. And then subtract, so what, 450 equals 200 ln of t plus 1. And again, remember the point here is to find t, how many years, the question is what's t, 
So I'm trying to get this thing by itself, T. Okay, so isolate T. That's what I'm trying to do. So get stuff away from this side where the T is. So I'm doing this. Okay, and I would suggest you can, you can make this a decimal, but make sure it's an exact decimal, not an irrational number. Because if it's irrational, well, it wouldn't be irrational. But if it's a fraction that you can't precisely express, then I wouldn't make it a, a, a decimal. Okay, uh, so if I mean a fraction that you can't precisely express as a decimal, if it looks strange or it has many weird non-repeating numbers, then I would just leave it as a fraction. But in this case, if you divide this, uh, you get a nice terminating decimal. So you get this, that cancels, and I have ln of t plus one. Now, how do I get the t out of there? Well, look, it's this looks a lot like the question we just did up here doesn't it? I've got a log base something of something equals something. So log base something of something equals something. It looks very, very similar. So I can do this. So uh, we can, you can either exponentiate or just use the definition of logarithms. I would like to use the definition of logarithms. This just says e to the 2.5, 2.25, sorry, is equal to t plus 1. e to the 2.25 equals t plus 1. And then you uh, subtract 1 here to isolate t completely. All right. And so what you would get is t is e to the 2.25 minus 1. And then you can approximate that by punching it in your calculator. And if you punch that in your calculator, you get 8.5 years because t is measured in years. Okay. So... Uh, if I know that this equation models the deer population's growth, then it'll take eight and a half years for the deer population to reach 500. All right. Okay, guys, I, that's our last lesson for the semester. I hope that you understand this stuff.